<laughs> For X-Men fans, there's no other character that embodies the spirit of youthful rebellion quite like Rogue. Since she was introduced to the iconic team of mutant superheroes some 40 years ago, Rogue's journey has been one of the most relatable aspects of the comics. Relatability aside, Rogue is also definitely someone you don't ever want to mess with. Most fans are probably quite familiar with Rogue's infamous power-absorbing mutation. But what exactly does this formidable ability entail? It's only natural to be intrigued by Rogue's powers, and thus, in this video, we shall be delving into the limits of Rogue's powers. Also, we'll try to find some ways to take this mutant powerhouse down. Do stick around to the end to find out. But before we move on, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It might be just a small click for you, but for us, it means an awful lot. With that out of the way, let's dive right in. Wearing any jewelry? <laughs> Every power and ability of Rogue. It's safe to say that Rogue has one of the most dynamic abilities among any of the X-Men. After all, in a world where everyone has superpowers, being able to steal said superpowers is quite a perk. But things have never been that easy for Anna Marie, as there are pretty terrible downsides to her skills. All throughout her journey, Rogue's relationship with her powers has been just as strained as her relationship with Gambit. And if you've read through the comics, you'll know how messy that love story was. Jokes aside, Rogue has actually always hated her powers, as they're often involuntary. Just imagine you're kissing the love of your life, when suddenly you suck in all their life energy, essentially turning your crush into a vegetable. Truly traumatizing, to say the least. And we kinda get Rogue for resisting her powers for a very long time. But in order to truly gauge why Rogue's abilities bear so heavy on her mind, let's have a look at all the things her powers allow her to do. Power, Life Force, and Memory Absorption This is undoubtedly Rogue's primary ability. It's also one of the most multifaceted abilities that we've ever seen. Powerful to the point that under ideal circumstances, Rogue can probably obliterate any foe all on her own. This mutation allows Rogue to absorb the powers, energies, and talents of any person in her vicinity. Unfortunately, this power is activated by skin-to-skin -skin contact with the other person. Thus, whenever Rogue loses control of her powers while maintaining physical contact with another person, it doesn't really go very well. In her initial years as an X-Men, Rogue was quite prone to losing control, but she's made massive strides in recent years. But hold on, being able to absorb is barely the beginning of Rogue's long list of abilities. She's actually quite a multitasker, and is quite capable of wielding several superpowers at the same time. Several is actually kind of an understatement, as she's even taken in the powers of the entirety of the X-Men and Avengers while the heroes were under attack by the Celestial Exitar. In this brief period, Rogue contained within herself the powers of a horde of A-listers like Wonder Man, Hyperion, and even the Hulk. I guess it's pretty safe to say that Rogue doesn't really have an upper limit. Definitely not someone you want to mess with. Rogue's mutation is not limited to absorbing physical powers, mind you. On many occasions, she's also siphoned psionic powers, emotions, and even memories from her victims. These aren't as easy as gaining physical powers, though, as having hundreds of voices and opinions in your head is probably pretty excruciating. This even makes her susceptible to mental manipulation, as she's basically sucking in the psyche of whomever she touches. So if she does this to a particularly nasty specimen, like Spiral or Mr. Sinister, she runs the risk of being overwhelmed by their malicious personalities. Usually the person on the receiving end of Rogue's powers is knocked out, and if things go really bad, they might even be rendered comatose. Makes having a love life really tricky, but surely you can't deny that Rogue is a literal arsenal all by herself. Over the years, Rogue has absorbed abilities from a wide range of mutants and celestial beings like Thor, Captain Marvel, Psylocke, Colossus, Wolverine, and even Ares. Back in the 80s, when under attack from the alien species Brood, Rogue even absorbed their powers. Since the Brood are essentially non-humanoid animals, no matter how alien, it's quite possible that she can siphon the powers of certain animals as well. With a range of powers as diverse as this, we wonder if the world still needs the X-Men. I mean, she could get a lot done on her own with nothing but a slight touch. We all choose sides, Rogue. Uh, uh Enhancements and augmentations. Living in the world of the X-Men means that you're constantly surrounded by strange geniuses and mad scientists. Chances are, sooner or later, you'll find yourself caught in some kind of shadowy experiment especially if you're a mutant. Of course, this also happened to Rogue on multiple occasions throughout her journey. We're sure this must have been very traumatizing, but it does help us to see the true limits of Rogue's powers. For instance, when infected with Strain 88 by the villain Pandemic, Rogue's touch became permanent and all-consuming. She was eventually cured of the enhancements, but this made her powers much more controllable. Another great influence on the young mutant was, of course, the foster father of the X-Men, Charles Xavier. The telepath helped Rogue get past the various barriers she'd built up in her mind, 
that kept her from truly controlling her powers. It was indeed a long and strenuous journey that would finally lead to Rogue gaining control over her powers, with all of it often coming at a great personal cost. In recent years, we've seen Rogue gain such extensive command over her once unruly abilities that she genuinely took in the powers of the Wonder Man permanently. Granted, the man was basically pure energy, but still, that's pretty impressive. This has allowed Rogue to gain some pretty interesting perks, like an ionic energy form, superhuman physical attributes, and even immortality to an extent. There's also that time when Rogue got her powers jump-started by the daughter of a Shi'ar Empress, which basically allows her to do whatever she wants without touching people. That means that you could be safely flying up in the sky using your precious powers, but Rogue could genuinely make you drop out of the sky for miles away. If we're being truly honest, that's kind of overpowered. How long does Rogue retain the powers after absorbing them? Rogue seems pretty unbeatable now, doesn't she? But don't worry, everything has its flaws, including Rogue's powers. And here, the problem lies in how long the powers linger after Rogue has touched her victim. According to most Marvel writers, the powers manifest themselves in a 1 to 60 ratio. For each second of skin to skin contact, Rogue gains about 60 seconds of absorbed power. So if she holds on to you for a minute, the powers would likely last around an hour. But beware, Rogue's powers can easily turn you into a vegetable and might even be lethal. Though the powers are temporary, repeatedly consuming someone else's psyche is actually pretty detrimental to Rogue's mental health, as she's absorbed countless memories and psyches in her time as an X-Men. Chunks of these personalities still linger in her mind. No wonder she has such a temperament. But this also provides her with a strange advantage. Since Rogue's mind contains so many diverse consciousnesses, she can't be mind-controlled in the usual way, as her psyche is just too fractured. Though the memories fade away after a while, the echoes of your greatest foe residing in your head is a truly terrifying thought. Are there any limitations to Rogue's powers? For the most part, Rogue's powers can seem limitless, but there have also been many instances where her absorption has been overwhelmed by even more powerful beings. Let's take her fight with Ares during the Utopia arc. Here, Rogue has already gained control of her powers when she goes up against the god of war Ares with her lover Gambit by her side. Ares is renowned across the Marvel Universe for his inhuman strength, but that wasn't going to stop Rogue from trying. As she touches the hulking warrior, trying to siphon off his power, it becomes clear that Ares is far too powerful. We get that Rogue is incapable of absorbing the entirety of Ares' strength and can only take in about half. This does the trick, and Gamut is able to blast Ares to a dreamless sleep. But the point still stands. When faced with individuals with tremendous power, Rogue might just come up a bit short. This also happens when she tries to use her skill on the Ghost Rider, a being that draws his power from the literal depths of hell. As we know, there's no end to that. Most powerful beings can usually withstand the excruciating effect of Rogue's touch, even imposing their own will on the young mutant every once in a while. Robotic creatures are also resistant to most of Rogue's powers, and thus, Sentinels are completely immune. However, she still poses a threat to techno-organic beings like Cyborg, meaning that she needs organic matter for her power to be effective. As Rogue's power has always been touch-based, it's only natural that she isn't really that good against beings that she can't touch. This is the reason why she had to flee from the new Ms. Marvel during Utopia, and even face problems with the Wonder Man initially. I guess even a solid layer protecting your skin can work, as it did for Colossus, allowing him to resist the aftershock of being touched by Rogue. The absorption still works, though. So I guess Rogue isn't thoroughly unbeatable. But what fun is a hero who doesn't fall? specific limitations to Rogue's incredible powers. So, here's a list of things one could probably do if you find yourself in a fight with Rogue. If you're immensely powerful, like to a cosmic level, there's probably little to worry about. You can not only resist Rogue's touch, but even the pain from it is probably more of a tingle to you. Or you could use robots to hunt her down. I mean, she can't really absorb technical circuitry. Just let her try in vain as you rain lasers or missiles down on her white streaked head. There's also a chance that you're a formidable giant. In that case, just let her take some of your psyche so that you can control her later from within her mind. If you want to take this a step further, like the ferocious dire wraiths, you could just dominate her to the point where she literally morphs into one of your own. But yeah, I also have a steadfast belief that before we could pull any of this off, she would probably bash our faces in.
Marvelous verdict. The age-old saying that you can be anything you want stands a bit truer for Rogue than the rest of us. Many consider her to be the X-Men's knockout specialist, and it's quite difficult to deny this. After all, she's gone up against the who's who of the Marvel Universe and survived to tell the tale. But this doesn't make her all-powerful. And to be honest, it's better that way. Rogue is at her best when she's vulnerable and lost, like most of us mortals. And this is genuinely what keeps us coming back for more. Whatever happens, we can all rest assured that we'll see a lot more from her in the coming years. That's it for us today, but do let us know if we missed out on a specific detail about Rogue in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay updated with more Marvelous content. Well then, see you all next time!